movie. Hold on, I need a minute. I need a minute. <laughs> Okay. What's good everybody? Welcome back to my channel. It's just me, Jenny, where it is what it is and you get what you get. And I'm back with another video. And today, as you can tell by the title, I'm about to list the top 10 movies that will have you in tears. So as you guys already know, or maybe you don't know, maybe you're new to this channel. If you are, welcome. Make sure you are subscribed. Make sure you hit that notification bell so that you are notified every single time I post a new video. And give this video a big old thumbs up if you agree with my list. Now, I am a huge fan of Miss Mojo Top 10s or whatever list they make i watch those all day every day but sometimes i do not always agree with their list so i decided why not make your own list and because i am obsessed with movies i can watch movies from the lowest budget to the biggest blockbuster film ever i watch a lot a lot a lot of movies now i am not an emotional person it takes a lot for me to cry but when it comes to a good movie, <gasps> I will be in tears, like real talk, like I will be crying. So I'm about to let you in on my top 10 list. And of course, this is again my opinion. But if you have your own, please share in the comments down below and let me know so I could probably check them out if I've never seen them before. Without further ado, let's get right into this video. Coming in at number 10 is Selena. Many of you probably seen it. If you haven't, you must be living under a rock. The film Selena is based on the life of Mexican-American music sensation Selena Quintanilla, played by Jennifer Lopez. Now, the first time I seen that movie was the first time I ever laid eyes on Jennifer Lopez. And she plays such an amazing job as Selena. I didn't really know Selena as an artist because I was kind of young when she was out. But from the movie and learning about her, she was a huge, 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 huge icon. Everybody knows Selena unfortunately passed away. She was killed by someone she thought was her friend. And the end scene, oh my gosh, like the last scene where the doctor told her family that she has passed even though you do not hear it because the music is playing just their emotion was enough to just have tears falling down your face and you just hear that beautiful song late at night when all the world is sleeping i stayed up and think and I still can't believe okay nobody wants to hear my singing but that song on top of the emotions of them of hearing that she has passed away and then the 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 candle vigil like they did for her where the real fans were out there it was just so emotional enough to just make you just and I can't front like to this day I actually still hate the actress that played the part that of Yolanda the lady that killed her like I still low-key hate that lady even though I know she's just the actress so I'm sorry <laughs> coming in at number nine is hardball if you are a 90s baby then you definitely know about hardball if you don't this film is about a gambling drinking little league coach played by Keanu Reeves who became the coach of these little league baseball players from the housing projects and he was in way over his head but those little boys you know he changed their lives and they changed his lives for the better he was on a downward spiral they were coming from a housing project that was dangerous you know at one point one of the little boys got beat up and jumped for his jan sport book bag if you grew up in the 90s you know that people were actually jumping people for their backpacks yes jan sport backpacks people were actually stealing them but that wasn't even the part that took the cake the part that took the cake was the youngest player of the team who was actually kind of too young to play 
but you know they still made him a part of the team because he loved playing with his older brother so he was always there in support until one day he actually got to play now they didn't show you the actual scene of him playing which we later on find out why because on his way home him and his brother they were trying to get into their building and as they were walking in a bunch of dudes came out and gunshots opened up from the car from the building bullets were flying both directions while these poor innocent little boys were standing they got out the way but not enough and then everything clears and the older brothers like it's gonna be okay they'll be leaving soon and then the camera pans down and you see the freaking bullet hole in g baby's chest <laughs> You cannot watch that scene and not cry. You cannot watch that scene because he was so cute. And it was so just, it was just stupid. The gun violence, it was like, and I can't lie, every time I watch it, I'm like, why the hell did y'all sit right there while the gunfire was going back and forth? Like, why didn't you run around to the other side of the building? Anywhere but there. But their kids, you know, they panicked. They didn't know. And obviously because they wanted him to pass away in the movie, that's why they Coming did. in at number eight, is Selma. My kings and queens, all of you should have seen this movie by now. If you have not, make sure you go watch it. Selma is based on the 1965 Selma to Montgomery voting rights marches, led by Dr. Martin Luther King and ended in a vicious attack known as Bloody Sunday. And everyone knows the story of black people not being able to vote because they were black and my dr martin luther king as well as many others they marched they protested to get us those rights and they they organized the march to travel from selma to montgomery alabama and as they got to the bridge they were met by a bunch of police officers that wasn't going to let them pass and it ended it ended really bad they were attacked viciously with dogs batons i mean these people were beaten and it was just it was it just brought so much emotion because obviously we are living that right now it's happening right now and it just triggered a lot of emotion and it was sad it was just sad because this is our history and not to mention the opening scene here comes another spoiler alert the opening scene is mind-blowing, no pun intended. The opening scene is of the four little girls that was murdered at the 16th Street Baptist Church in Birmingham, Alabama. Um, it, if you don't know that story, please make sure you go and look it up. Go check out the Spike Lee documentary about it called Four Little Girls. Um, it just showed the image of these little girls talking and laughing and going down the steps and all of a sudden it's just this huge explosion that you try to put yourself in their position and you know like i mean there were it was instant death you already know it was but it was just heartbreaking that somebody can put a bomb in the bottom of a church and could have killed everybody that was you know could have killed more than that but the fact that it killed those four innocent children was just devastated so the whole movie is just a tear jerker throughout from the beginning all the way to the end it's me every time coming in at number seven is the pianist the first time i ever seen this film was in class the class i was taking was memoirs and film or something i don't remember but the professor showed us the film and wow i was just like jaw on the floor like i couldn't even believe some of the things that they had to go through um we all know about the holocaust you know the nazis what they did to jewish people horrific absolutely horrific and to watch this man who was um once a very popular pianist played in the restaurants to watch him get separated from his family and struggling to survive i mean this man was going through 
one obstacle through another obstacle, hiding, going, starving for days. I mean, it was just, it was just, I can't even explain how many times he escaped death. It was so bad. I think one of the first scenes that just blew my mind was I don't know what you would call them the generals the sergeants I don't know they came storming into these people house and when they were to enter a room everyone was I guess to stand up and respect and one of the people one of the family members was in a wheelchair obviously they could not stand up and you see them like yelling at him to get up what is he supposed to do he's in a wheelchair and what they did they rolled him over to the balcony, tilted the chair and just dropped him to the ground and killed him. It was like, are you are you serious? Like the man is in a wheelchair. How was he supposed to get up and respect you? Like it was just heartbreaking. At one point they had people lined up. They was marching them somewhere and then all of a sudden they just told them to stop and then executed every last one of them on the street it was just hard. every single scene was just like too much you was on your edge you was scared for him you didn't know when he was gonna get caught it was just so and then when they finally got rescued uh coming in at number six is still magnolias now i know a lot of you probably like still magnolias really but yes, and I'm talking of the original Steel Magnolias, not the Lifetime remake that starred Queen Latifah and Felicia Rashad. Even though that one was very good, that was actually the first one I saw. Then I heard that that one was a remake, so I went to watch the original. And Steel Magnolias is based on a group of friends sharing a close bond in a small town, different diverse women, Sally Fields plays the mother of Julia Roberts' character. What was her name? Shelby. And Shelby was diabetic. And she was newly married. At one point, Shelby gets pregnant and against doctor's orders. Because of her condition, it would be a risky pregnancy. But she wants to have a child. So she had this baby after she had the child she really pushed her kidneys i believe to the limit i think she even had a transplant with the mom and it just it didn't work out and unfortunately she passed away and then there was this scene that whew, sally fields just sold it at that funeral when her friends was trying to con you know console her and she said this line and she was like, I'm fine, I'm fine. I can run to Texas and back if I wanted to, but my daughter can't and she never could. That one was just like, oh my God. Like I felt her pain, I felt it because you know, her daughter suffered her whole life. And you know, as a mom, you don't want to see, you don't want that for your child. You don't want your child to suffer. You don't want to bury your child. So I understood her pain and it was just like, oh man, she just left you sobbing after that. And she was just like, you know, her son is never going to know how much she sacrificed for him to be here. And eventually, you know, as friends always find a way to make you laugh in the midst of you bawling, crying. But it was really a beautiful scene and Sally Fields sold the hell out of that scene. Coming in at number six is one of my favorite, favorite movies, Hotel Rwanda. I drive my mother crazy with this movie because every time it comes on, I have to watch it. Hotel Rwanda starring the very underrated actor, Don Cheadle, is about a hotel manager in Rwanda, Africa that shelters thousands of Tutsi refugees during a fight against the Hutu militia. That movie is a nail biter. It's a tear jerker. Um, you know, there was a war going on between the Tutsi tribe and the Hutu and Don Cheadle's character happened to be a Hutu which meant that he was safe, but his wife was Tutsi. And obviously because she's his wife, he's gonna protect her of course, which that would make him a traitor. But this man did so much to protect these people in his hotel. I mean, it was a beautiful traveling resort. Most of the people coming out of town, they stayed there, but 
they got all the white people out because they knew there was a big war about to begin and you know he had to bring in so many people they were running out of water they was running out of food this man was giving up jewelry giving up liquor bribing so many things he did to save these people and there was a scene where he left out i think to go make negotiation with one of the leaders of the hutu i believe and on his way back they were riding in the van the van started getting real bumpy real bumpy and they wasn't really sure what was going on and when they got out the car all they saw was bodies covering the road from one side to the other there were so many bodies and it was just heartbreaking and he had to they had to continue down this road riding over these bodies and the cars just going and when he got back to the hotel he just lost it like that would traumatize anyone you understand and 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 not only the the the, the trauma but the fear that this could possibly be your kids your your wife they can come in that hotel and kill everyone there including yourself so that movie just uh it it just it gets me Coming in at number four is Fruitville Station. Now, a lot of you may know, a lot of you may not know, this movie is so current to what is going on to today. It's still happening, happened back then, and this movie really, really gets me emotional. Fruitville Station is based on the true story of Oscar Grant, 22-year-old unarmed black man that was shot and killed by a white police officer on the subway platform on New Year's. The movie stars my husband, Michael B. Jordan. I said that like it was natural, right? But uh, no, Michael B. Jordan was played Oscar Grant, played it very, very well. And the, the, the film shows his last moments, everything from the top of the day to the last moments of his life. And it shows you so many different sides of him how he was trying to be this better man. He wanted to do the right thing. He had a child, you know, but sometimes the street life gets you caught up and you know, you're still young and doing things that you shouldn't be doing, but you can tell how badly he wanted to do the right thing. And making a simple decision of getting on this subway train to go back home ended in him being shot and killed for no reason. He was belly down on the ground, unarmed, handcuffed, and the cop shot him in the back. And his words was, you shot me, man. Why'd you shoot me? And it was just, it was so heartbreaking because I can't lie, watching the whole film, it reminds me of somebody and it's just like, when somebody wants to do good so bad, and then things like that happen and they don't even get a chance to make it right, which goes to show you, you gotta make things right today. Rest in peace to Oscar Grant and arrest the killers of Breonna Taylor, please. Moving on to number three, the Titanic. Do I really need to explain why the Titanic is such an emotional movie? Who doesn't cry when watching the Titanic? We all know the story of the 1912 ship that was supposed to be unsinkable, hit an iceberg and went down and took so many lives with it. What makes the movie extremely emotional? Obviously because you see the suffering of everyone trying to survive, but what really sold it was the story of Jack and Rose. Even though it was a fictional story, the Titanic is a true story, but the story of Jack and Rose was fictional and their story made it just so much more emotional. They were in love, they fell in love on the boat, her willing to give her life for him. But even though you felt that way, why the hell you ain't find a way for him to get up on that boat? I mean, to get up on that door or whatever that piece of wood y'all was floating on. Just saying. Rose managed to get on the freaking piece of door, but somehow Jack 
made it flip over. But they only really tried it like one or two times. Like y'all definitely could have worked that out. Or you could have saved time by keep rotating yourselves and trying to figure it out. That would have saved y'all time and being cold in the water. But eventually Jack dies. We all know the story. And when you see him going down and she was like, I'll never let go, Jack. Ooh. And you just see him going, Ooh. never let go, Jack. We're never, we still never letting go of you either, Jack. I'm still mad at you, Rose. Moving on to movie number two. This movie, you want to see me snot nose, bawling, crying? United 93. If you have never seen that movie, make sure you watch that movie. As an American, as somebody who lived through the tragedy of 9-11, you have to watch this movie. Um, it wasn't on the big screen. I believe it was a TV movie. I'm not too sure, but I remember seeing it on TV. United 93 is based on one of the real plane hijackings that took place on September 11, 2001. The movie shows you, it begins at the airport. It shows you the hijackers, how they you know, went about this whole plan, not sitting together, what they did with certain, you know, the bombs and all their fake bombs, whatever it was. It shows you, you know, their nervous energy and it shows you, you know, some of the passengers getting aboard, some of their little back, little backstories, nothing major. Um, they aboard the plane, everybody's going about their normal day and then all of a sudden, these hijackers jump up and start screaming. I'd rather not say, but they start screaming and, you know, put the fear of God in everyone. They take over the plane. They kill the pilot and the co-pilot in the cockpit. They take over the plane. Now these people are hysterical. They don't know what's going on, what to do. They're calling because some, you know, the plane has phones on them. They were calling their family. Some of their families was telling them about the other hijackings that took place about the World Trade Center. They then put two and two together that this was a hijacking and they were going to do something about it. This is what gets me with this movie. I believe that plane was headed to the White House. If the, if the film got it right, because I don't know, you don't know we don't know we were not there if what they said was partial to the truth it pained me so bad because when i tell you these people fought for their life on that plane they all started talking they came up with a plan what to do they found somebody who knows how to fly the plane and they made a plan to get in that cockpit and fight for their damn lives. You understand me? And I think, you know, you had some people that was just in fear. They didn't want to help. They didn't want to agitate the people because they really didn't know what to, to do. And that's understandable. But the rest of them, they wasn't having it. They were like, no, you're not going to kill us. You're not going to crash this into whatever you plan on crash. They fought. When I tell you they fought, and the way the scene shows you of them fighting, fighting with these men everybody's hand is on the steering wheel and it's going out of control and then all of a sudden it just boom crashes when i tell you i can never watch that movie without crying uncontrollably and i think it's because of the way those people fought is what devastates me they are real heroes I must say salute to all of the passengers and the workers of United 93. So before I get to number one, here's a few honorable mentions. Coco, Toy Story 3, The Best Man Holiday, coming in at number one. 
the boy in the striped pajamas. This movie is so sad, I can't even watch it twice. You can't watch that movie twice. You just can't. That movie, hold on, I need a minute, I need a minute. The Boy in the Striped Pajamas is about an eight-year-old boy, the son of a commander at a German concentration camp. He befriends a little Jewish boy, and for obvious reasons, this friendship is forbidden, but they find little ways to play together through a barbed wire fence, and the ending is absolutely gut-punching. First of all, throughout the movie, this little Jewish boy has the saddest eyes I've ever seen. Like his little face just makes me wanna just hold him. The other little boy who was living freedom, he wasn't even aware of what was happening to this child. He just looked at him as a friend. He was so naive, he didn't understand the whole concentration camp. At one point, the little boy and some others was brought into his home as servants and the little boy had a bruise on his eye and the little the, the the eight year old boy he didn't have a clue of what this child was going through on a daily basis so towards the end i believe the little boy gets to a point where he wants to you know he wants to come to the other side so the little boy the little Jewish boy gets these striped pajamas to give to his friend. The kid makes his way to the other side. And they end up, I'm going to just keep a long story short. They end up in a gas chamber. A whole bunch of them are rushed into this gas chamber. The fear on these little boys' faces, they don't even understand what's happening, what's going on. And I'm keep I, the whole time I'm watching, I'm waiting for like his dad or somebody to realize like, hey, you know, I'm just waiting for somebody to stop this. And when I realized it wasn't being stopped and those two little boys among so many others were killed in that gas chamber. When I tell you, I cried so hard. Like you would have thought that little boy was my child. You would have thought that this was real life. It was happening in real life, but you would have thought that I was standing there in person watching these two little boys die. That movie gets me so emotional that I, I said I'm never watching this again. But I do, I do urge you to watch it at least once because it was a very good movie. With that being said, that is a wrap for my top 10 movies that will make you cry. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Check out some of those movies. Make sure you guys follow me on all my social medias. And let me know in the comments down below if you want me to do more of these top 10 movie lists. Because I have so many like I can do. Because I love movies. Jenny is out.